Hello and welcome to our video on how to keep your green card. You receive the green card, but life goes on. You may be transferred to a job abroad, or just decide to live on a tropical island for a few years. How do you keep your green card if you are not living in the United States? The most important issue is that you maintain the intent to reside in the United States. So, to keep the green card, must you live in the United States all the time? No, but you must intend to do so. Here are the basic rules. 1. As a permanent resident, you are subject to worldwide taxation in the United States. You must declare your worldwide income on your tax return 1040 due each April. You must declare even your investment gains in, let's say, South Africa or from some offshore accounts. And be sure to file the regular 1040 tax return, not the non-resident tax return 1040 NR. You should maintain an address in the United States. You should have an active bank account. You should maintain your credit card in the United States. You should maintain a U.S. driver's license. You should be integrated in the United States, for example, by being a member of a tennis club or some other association. It goes without saying, do not commit any crimes, such as an aggravated felony or a crime of moral turpitude, which would be, for example, drunk driving with a suspended license. Don't get involved in drugs either. We have a separate video on crimes that interfere with immigration matters. If you do not live in the United States all the time, you should enter at least every six months. It can be even as a stopover on the way to Mexico or Canada. If you absolutely cannot enter the United States for one year or more, you should apply for a re-entry permit, Form I-131, which I will explain in more detail in just a minute. What if you really cannot come to the United States for an extended period? If you do not live in the United States all the time, you should enter the United States at least every six months. If you are absent for more than six months, you're considered suspicious. The immigration officer will be suspicious that you may not have the intent to reside in the United States. If you stay abroad for one year or more, it is presumed that you do not have the intent to reside in the United States. Then consider the re-entry permit. I-131. If you're in the United States as a permanent resident or as a conditional permanent resident, for example, if you obtained uh, the green card through an investment EB-5 or through marriage to a U.S. citizen, you may apply for a re-entry permit. After filing your application for a re-entry permit, USCIS will tell you where to go to a local application support center, ASC, for your biometrics appointment basically a photograph and your fingerprints. You must be physically present in the United States when you file for the re-entry permit. However, a re-entry permit may be sent to a U.S. Embassy or Consulate, but you must request so when you file your application. Departure from the United States before USCIS decides on your application for a re-entry permit usually does not affect the application. However, make sure that you go to the biometrics appointment before departing the United States. Otherwise, your application will be denied. If you intend to apply in the future for naturalization, absences from the United States for one year or more will generally break the continuity of residence in the United States. If you intend to remain outside the United States for one year or more, you should file Form N-470. N470, Application to Preserve Residence for Naturalization. Generally, a re-entry permit issued to a permanent resident shall be valid for two years from the date of issuance. So, here's what to do. Let's say you were abroad for more than six months and returned to the United States. The immigration officer at the airport asks you, you were not in the United States for more than six months. Do you have the intent to reside in the United States? What do you answer? You answer, yes, officer. I have filed my tax returns properly, and I happen to have a copy with me. Also, I have an apartment in Orlando where I live. I have a bank account. Here's my bank account statement. It is very active. 
and I am a member of the local chicken breeders club. The practice of immigration officers is quite inconsistent. So let me give you two recent examples where I assisted clients in these matters. Number one, a beautiful young lady on a US green card worked abroad for more than one year and wanted to return to the United States to start a new job. I advised her beforehand to take proof that she filed her United States tax returns while abroad, that she maintains an address and a home in the United States, that she has a bank account, that many of her relatives, including her parents, live in the United States, and that she has a job offer in the United States, and that she's a member of various social clubs. When she entered, the immigration officer sent her to secondary inspection, that inspection area usually right near the baggage claim at the airport, and they interviewed her. She was prepared to answer the questions and had all the documents ready. The officers imposed a fine on her, but let her keep the green card. By the way, the more appropriate solution would have been for her to apply as a returning resident at the U.S. consulate. It's the so-called SB1 visa, but she did not have time to do that. But if you are absent from the United States for more than one year and you would like to return to the United States, you should contact an immigration attorney and see if that SB1 visa is the right solution for you. Here's another very recent case. It happened only a few days ago. A young lady had obtained a green card through marriage to a U.S. citizen, but then she divorced and she returned to her home country. She had not been in the United States for more than one year. The immigration officer sent her to secondary inspection and she was wholly unprepared. She had not filed United States tax returns. She only had a mailbox address in the United States and her U.S. bank account had less than $50 in it. She was not a member of any social club or organization and did not have any other relatives in the United States. The officers kept her passport and informed her that she would receive an interview notice at a USCIS office in the near future. I advised her that her chances of keeping the green card are very low and that she might be better off just returning her green card and retrieving her passport. Also green cards expire. Remember that the newer green cards have an expiration date, usually 10 years. That does not mean that you lose your permanent residence when the green card expires. It only means that you cannot travel and employers will not accept it as evidence of your legal status for employment authorization verification, the so-called I-9 form that you have to fill out when you start a new job. You have to apply for a new green card using form I-90. Once you file the I-90, you will receive a substitute as evidence of your green card status while the new green card is being processed. It is like your passport. When your passport expires, you do not lose your citizenship. You simply have to apply for a new passport. If you received your green card through marriage, please check the expiration date because your green card was probably issued for only two years. That is called conditional residency the first time and you have to file a different petition to remove the condition on your residency using form I-751, I-751. Consider citizenship. There is one way of avoiding all of these problems. If you have to be abroad for several years, let's say you are James Bond, Agent 007, and you have to go on a secret mission in Russia for several years to save the world, you should consider applying for U.S. citizenship. If you have citizenship, there is no problem with not living in the United States all the time. And remember that you can possibly have dual citizenship. That is something that you need to check with your embassy. For example, Germany has a law since 2002 that permits German green card holders to apply for a permit to retain the German citizenship when they apply for U.S. citizenship. That must be done before applying for U.S. citizenship. I have assisted one young lady who was born in Germany, but her mother married a U.S. citizen. The young lady was on a green card in the United States and then decided to study in Germany. 
She was granted that permit by the German authorities to keep her German citizenship before she applied for US citizenship. The German authorities accepted the argument that she would have to stay in Europe for several years to complete her studies, and on a student budget, it would be quite a burden to travel to the United States every six months just to maintain her green card status. If you have more questions about keeping your green card, please speak to an immigration attorney. Thank you.